Big news today on my birthday in regards to the Las Vegas shooting. You know I've been staying on this, investigating, exposing things, and revealing the truth. Because the truth is what we seek. And they don't want to give it to us, but we're going after it, and we're going to keep going after it until we get all the truth. And remember the other day I put this video up right here, examined Las Vegas shooting public records released of documents, FBI documents, affidavits. And what I did is, I mean, this thing was huge. This was like over 400 pages, but it was uh, late one night and I went through all of it. And what I did is I highlighted what I thought was important and I talk about that in this video. And one thing that I noticed over and over in this released information that we've been seeking is that the spotlight was on Mary Lou Danley. Um, Paddock's supposed girlfriend. Throughout all of this uh, information and these documents, affidavits, and all this stuff, I noticed that it seemed like they were focusing on her, Mary Lou Danley. And I also talk about in that video how I feel like that it's possible that she may be somebody that they are actually might want to go after, <laughs> maybe even possibly arrest. I don't know. I said one of two things. Either she's involved in it, they know who she is, and she works with the FBI along with Paddock, or either she was involved in it in a way that is really bad for her, and 2018 could be a very bad year for her, because it sure seems like everything in, those do in that documentation and affidavits and all that information, it seemed like that they were trying to find out more about her, how, what role she played in the shooting, and the possibility that she was involved with it along with whoever the shooters were. They say, of course, Stephen Paddock, which is her boyfriend. So that's what was really interesting there. And now what I found out, and I wanted to put this up yesterday, but I got to put it up today because I, I, I was wanting to put it up last night. And this new information is quite revealing indeed. Also, I want to mention that on Tuesday, an attorney for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department said at a court hearing in response to media lawsuit that charges are expected in the investigation. I'll repeat that. Charges are expected in the investigation. And this is where I think Mary Lou Danley comes into play right here. And that's why I want to mention that. Though he did not indicate who may be facing charges and what connection those charges have to the shooting, but I'm telling you right that. This video right here, this is a game changer. Uh, this takes the cake right here. Um, you know, exposed. Mary Lou Danley, a.k.a. Paddock's girlfriend, was in Las Vegas. She was in Las Vegas. Now, it looks like we have evidence that she was in Las Vegas on the day of the Las Vegas shooting. Yes, she was there in Las Vegas, it looks like, on the day of the shooting. Is this crazy or what? But that's what this evidence seems to support. And, you know, I mentioned that in many videos. How many videos did I mention? I said that something tells me, my gut feeling... My intuition tells me that Mary Lou Danley was not out of the country, that she was actually in Las Vegas on the day of the shooting and in in some of the days prior to it. I just felt like, I didn't say that she didn't leave and go out of the country at some point, but it looks like it was probably the day of the shooting. And I'm not surprised by this, because I mentioned that several times. I just had that feeling. Something told me that, uh, that, that she was there, and it looks like now we have evidence to prove that this is the truth. And I've got a link in the description here if you want to go read the article also uh, because this is big breaking news right here. It truly is. And I'm going to read about read this right now here. Uh, new information suggests that Mary Lou Danley was in Las Vegas on the day of the massacre, the Las Vegas shooting. This is huge. Stephen Paddock's girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley, was not overseas the entire week leading up to the deadly Las Vegas shooting on October 1st, but in fact joined Paddock at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino three days before the gun massacre that killed 58 people, according to a source with presumed access to hotel records. So this is how you find out this information. And that's what I talk about all the time. You know, we get these the people that call in on sub-talk. They reveal stuff. Um, don't worry about whether what the questions I ask or, or whether I try to pin them down, anything like that, because this is what, I, what you have to realize. Whenever you get somebody that does an interview, they're really revealing information that we can only use to benefit ourselves trying to find out more stuff, right? And if we pin them down and scare them off, then other people that want to do interviews might not come forward. What we want is to have the most amount of people possible that were at the shooting, at the concert, involved in all this stuff, to come forward and to do these interviews and talk. Because this is where we get our evidence that nobody else can give us. 
because authorities are not giving it to us. This is how people can sometimes slip and say things they're not supposed to or reveal information that we can use. And so that's why I talk about that. You know, uh, if some people leave comments and stuff, that's why I do it that way. I want a friendly environment. I want them to talk, and I want more and more and more people to come forward that are witnesses to do these sub-talk interviews. Okay, so that, I just wanted to mention that also. And we're getting revealing things in that. And it might not all be the, the people that call in might not be what you agree with. They're telling the truth that they're honest or whatever. But that's okay. That's okay. Some you'll agree with, some you won't. But the point is we're getting evidence. When, as long as that mouth is open and talking, we're getting evidence. So I want to mention that also right quick. But, yeah, this is really huge right here because, um, I mean, yeah, this is amazing. And, see, this is how we get information from other people. It's you and I that, can, that know this. People that work at Mandalay Bay Hotel, people that worked and, and witnessed what happened during the shooting, that's how we get our information. Because if the authorities don't want to tell us, some, like I say all the time, somebody out there knows. And all we need is these people to know to come forward and give us this information. And that's what's happening right here in this new information. And that's why I say keep that friendly environment, keep talking to people, and keep seeking the truth. Um, see, this is hotel records. So somebody like you and I had to come forth and, and present these to somebody, and that's how we're finding out. According to early reports, Paddock brought Danley a, bought Danley a ticket to return to her native Philippines two weeks before the deadly massacre, and she did not arrive back to the United States until October 3rd. But a Las Vegas-based NBC TV reporter says he has information that Danley was with Paddock at the Mandalay Bay on September 28th, meaning she must have returned from her overseas trip to see him before presumably leaving the United States again on October the 1st. And as far as money goes, that's no problem. Paddock had plenty of money, so I wouldn't doubt this story one bit. I mean, he, he supposedly wired her $100,000. And it's like Eric Paddock, his brother, said, $100,000 is nothing to them. The amount of millions of dollars, I mean, millions and millions of dollars that Stephen Paddock made and had, it's no problem, okay? So this becomes very interesting right here. Um, so, yeah, apparently leaving the United States again October the 1st, but, I mean, that's the day of the shooting. So what this also, so what's so important about this also is this reveals that she may have played a much bigger part in what went down than what authorities originally thought, right? Because apparently maybe she lied to them. She might have lied to the FBI, it sounds like, possibly. And she was deceptive. And the fact is, if this is true, you know, which I believe it seems to be, uh, because I don't think somebody from would come forward with this information if they don't have solid evidence because it would really hurt their career. Now, um, so that's what's interesting about this. So if this is true, then that means she probably knew what was going to go down. Because if she's leaving out on the day of the shooting, why would she pick the day of the shooting to leave out? I don't know. I, I, and, why, and, her, and we already know that she, in the affidavit, that she confirmed and said that her fingerprints were on the bullets, right? She said, you'll probably find... The, the fingerprints on the bullets and some of the um, equipment used in the shooting, you know, um, all this stuff, the magazine. She said they might be on the magazines and the bullets. So <laughs> put it to pieces of puzzle together and it starts becoming quite evident to me. And, uh, and when she said that she might, you know, in that affidavit where she said her fingerprints might be found on the bullet, I thought that was kind of strange indeed. Why is she coming out and saying this? And why would that even be? She didn't seem like any gun enthusiast or anything. So what, why, you know, so it sounds to me like what's going on there is she's putting these bullets into these um, magazines and touching all these bullets because, to help him get prepared for what was going to happen. Whether he was a shooter or not, to get all this stuff ready for whatever was going to go down, she was helping him. And what does that tell me? She knew what was going to go down. And when the police come out and say that there may be some arrests soon, and that uh, and the affidavit supports that they're eyeing this woman and they've got her name mentioned all over those reports and all. That tells me that she's a prime target to possibly arrest it, in my opinion. And so this is a game changer right here. And I, this, I had this thought all the time. I thought this was what was going down. I really did, especially after reading the affidavit and all those legal documents. So, yeah, I presume we're leaving the uh, United States again on October 1st. Uh, NBC reporter Craig Fanner said in a tweet on Wednesday that an unnamed source confirmed to him that Danley's name was added to Paddock's reservation on September 28th, three days after FBI search warrants put her in the Philippines and three days after Paddock checked into the hotel alone. 
And here's his tweet right here. Stephen Paddock, girlfriend's name, Mary Lou Danley, added to the Mandalay Bay room reservations on September 28, 2017, says source. First reservation on September 25th only included Paddock name. FBI search warrants disclosed she was in the Philippines on the 25th. Also, we know that he checked in under her name, but also we know that her, apparently her, um, her, her card, you know, her, her, um, that card she uses the casino, her casino card was found on the desk. I guess supposedly by that note that supposedly had the trajectory. You know, we saw that note on the table. I guess that was where it's found. I know that because they mentioned that in the um, after they breached the room in the police scanner audio. So that's how we know that. And they've already confirmed that in the affidavit also. So that's another point I want to make there. Now, speaking on the phone to Crime Online, I have the link in this description area for them. This the link is in here for them. You know, uh, Fairness noted that this new development does not negate the earlier verified reports that Danley was in fact traveling overseas or at least in transit at the time of the massacre. He said he believes that she likely boarded a plane again on Sunday, October first, though he did not reveal precisely how the timeline was formed. So, see, they can investigate this, and they should be able to find that she did, in fact, board a plane to the Philippines on October the 1st, which is the, uh, 2017, which is the day of the shooting. And now, if it turns out that she used false name to get on a plane or some way did something with that, then that makes her even more guilty. So we'll find out more about that. The latest reports per, per, put this into a new perspective, a claim made by controversial independent investigative journal, journalist Laura Luma, who published a Medium post on Tuesday claiming to have a valet receipt indicating indicating that Danley was in, the, in Las Vegas on October 1st. The valid receipt shown in the post lists Mary Lou Danley as a hotel guest who dropped off Paddock's Chrysler with the valet on October 1st at 12.36 p.m. with an expected pickup date on October 4th. Now, whether that can be verified or not, she has a picture of it, I know, on her site. It's very possible since the, it sounds like she was there at that hotel Mandalay Bay on October 1st, the day of the shooting. Now, what time she left, we don't know, but... That's possible that what, um, you know, what Laura Luma has is valid, you know. Another piece of evidence possible. Crime Online cannot verify the authenticity of the valet receipt published in Luma's Medium Post. On Tuesday, an attorney for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, and I already read that, you know, said that it looks like uh, the charges are expected in the investigation. I already mentioned that. So like and share this video. We're getting there. We are getting the truth out there. We're going to stay on this, taking back the world one video at a time, you and I.